Hi everyone, our journal page, and I'm starting with just smearing paint I'm using today. I've got gelatos, I've got some other stuff that is supposed to be some kind of crayons that also react with water. If you can't uh, get your hands on gelatos uh, from Faber-Castell, look for poster paint. It's uh, like I've got these are a uh, poster paint and or crayon sticks that react with water there are all kinds of stuff out there to buy very cheaply that react with water and i'm just using what i have i want to start with a little a hint of pink and yellow in the back so i'm just putting it down quite randomly Most of the color that I want will be uh, greens and blues. So right now I'm just putting this. I just want it to peek through the greens and blue that I'm going to put on. So very um, quickly, maybe a little bit of light yellow. I am using a baby wipe to activate the color and to smear it. This is sketch paper in this journal, so let's see. This is new, I just bought it in the cheap store, so I don't know how it will be. Let's see. Oh, it's very soft. Let's see before I'm doing the whole page. Smears nicely, but needs a, a lot more to get some coverage. I'm not sure yet how this, <laughs> this is going to be. I'm just playing around with the colors. So I'm going to put a, a lot more of each color. And I'm really hoping for a blended soft look in the back. I'm already uh, planning on my focal point to be some uh, black and white so i will have contrast with this background and we'll see what happens so as you can see i'm just spreading it around quite randomly and let's see nope let's use this green Not sure yet. This could be a mess and maybe I will have to start over. <laughs> Don't know. We'll see. Okay. Another green. Just spreading it. I wonder what will happen. I have white. Never tried the white. I wonder what will happen if I will put white on top of most of the color I put on the page. So quite a mess here. Okay, let's hope for the best. This uh, baby wipe is not wet enough, so I'm taking another one. Let's fold it, and now I'm just 
going like this. Need to change. The sketch paper is absorbing the moisture out of the baby white wipe quite fast. Okay. Okay. I'm going to try because I'm curious. Let's see if I put white, if it will give me a more soft and blended look. Oh, that's nice. I think I want more of this color. So I'm just going to add it like so. Okay, that's interesting. And well, I'm leaving it be for a uh, right now. We'll see if I need to do something else. Very simple right now. And I'm moving on to what I wanted to uh, use as a focal point. This is my focal point, not all of it. I want to just use part of it. And this is just, I took it, I think, from National Geographic. Now, I don't want to just put it like this on my page. I want to do something else. I've printed uh, this uh, puzzle pieces, a uh, board, a uh, template, whatever. <laughs> you can, uh, you just need to do a search for free printable puzzle pieces or something like that. There are all kinds of sizes and and all kinds of different shapes this is bigger if you want like this and um, another way to go about it is going to all kinds of cheap stores and buying very cheap puzzle pieces uh, for uh, children that's another way to go about it I've used this before and if you do use something like this, it's better to work on this side, which is not glossy. It just makes life easier. So I've got this template and I've got uh, this photo that I want to use as my focal point. And I'm going to glue this in the back. Let's see. I mostly I want this. Um, no. Okay, so I'm going to just glue it. So let's take just using a glue stick. Right now I'm putting it on all the photo and I will see what I want to use. Okay, nice amount. I I see partly the design in the back so just putting it down and now I need to start cutting my puzzle pieces I'm using a nail nail scissors for the curvy parts and just straight scissors for this part. Nail scissors are more dainty and they have a curve so you can use it to your advantage. Like if I have this curve I will use my scissors like this and it just makes life easier.
Now, if you don't want to lose track of uh, your puzzle pieces, you can just uh, take pencil or a pen and number them so you can assemble them quite quickly without trying to figure out what, where each part go. Up to you. So now I'm going to just, <laughs> uh, just uh, cut all the pieces and I'll be back. Okay, so finished uh, <laughs> cutting all the puzzle pieces. I'm don't uh, I'm not going to use all of them. I think I will uh, remove uh, one or two. But right now I want to move them aside because I still want to work on my background. I want some details in the back. And I've picked this uh, stencil and I want to use a distress ink. I have pine needles and I've got a chipped sapphire. We'll see how it goes. Mostly I want uh, just leaves uh, in the back, so that's why I've picked it. And again, I'm going for soft, that's why I'm using the Distress ink with this kind of makeup brush. So it would be very soft in the background. And I'm changing in between. If you are following my channel, you know how I like things to be with several colors and not all the way one solid color. I think it looks more interesting, more organic, so that's why I'm, I'm doing it. Ooh, I like it. Okay, so just picking up... Once green, once blue, and also they mix and blend together, so that's also good. In several places, I'm um, pushing the makeup brush more into the paper, uh, so I've got again more a uh, <laughs> variation in what's a uh, coming out and not one solid thing so i'm just spreading it all over the page It's a little bit difficult here with the spiral, but we shall overcome. Okay, blue. Green. <laughs> of course, I can always introduce another color, but that's good enough for me it's still just a background so i'm not really concerned okay i'm just uh, using each time a different part of the stencil so again there won't be one pattern that continues repeating Now I am really in love with this background after the stenciling. Just great. Yeah. 
Okay, so finished with this. Now I need to see how I'm playing with my puzzle pieces. And I don't want them connected too much. So I'm, I will see how this goes. Let's see. Mm. No, maybe I'm just playing until I'm satisfied <laughs> with the placement. thinking I'll put it like this and I think each piece of puzzle needs some definition mm, I don't know maybe I'll just go with a black line around each piece like I'm taking, this is a permanent marker, and let's see. Something I'm thinking, I will just go around each piece like this, so each piece will be a little bit more defined. I'm not using an ink pad to do the edges of the puzzle pieces because this is glossy paper from a magazine and it will just smear. Yes, I'm. it seems like this will go nicely with just doing a contour line for each piece. So these are the pieces that I want to use and I'm just going to start going over the edges, I'll be back. Okay, so I finished going around each piece with a permanent marker and I already glued it to my page and just used the glue stick. For me, this page is finished. The only thing I want uh, to add is a word and I'm just going to put it here. Well, I thought I'm going to... <laughs> now I don't know where I want it. Let's see. I'm going to put it here. Create. That's it. That's my page. Kind of weird, but I really liked playing with the puzzle pieces. It has lots of potential to do all kinds of other stuff. Maybe I'll do another one a later on so this is it thank you for watching thank you for leaving me comments down below i'll be seeing you in my next video bye for now